the best diet advice, which is by far the biggest reason I've been able to get lean and stay lean is to eat in moderation, to learn how to enjoy all my favorite foods responsibly to the point of satisfaction, to gain control over my portion sizes rather than allowing those foods to have control over me. Simple advice that is also the hardest thing to apply. It's the biggest reason I hear from people who have tried to eat in moderation before, like it just doesn't work for me. I can't control myself. Those people tend to gravitate more towards elimination diets. Maybe they go on a 30 day sugar detox, which may not be the best thing, but it's not necessarily the worst thing either. There's something you can learn from that experience. Maybe it simply breaks you out of some habits that you've been in. Maybe you're used to having two sugars in your coffee, or when you're at work, you go around to your colleague's desk and dip your hand in their candy jar all the time. Or maybe you are in the evening watching TV and you're used to having a sugary snack at that time and going on this 30 day sugar detox breaks you out of those habits. That's a good thing. Maybe you think to yourself, you know what? I think carbs are the reason I'm struggling to lose weight. So you go on a low carb diet. Again, maybe not the best thing, but there's some lessons you can learn from that experience. Maybe you realize, you know what? Having more proteins and fats in my diets makes me feel more satiated. Maybe you recognize being too low on carbs doesn't, uh, it has a negative impact on your performance in the gym, your energy, your overall mood and well being. Maybe it has a negative impact on your mental focus and your clarity. Maybe it has a opposite effect. Again, there's learning experiences that you can have from each of these diets. Or maybe you decide to go on a paleo diet, eliminate anything that uh, our ancestors didn't eat. From that experience, maybe you learn, holy smokes, so I'm consuming mostly or all whole natural nutrient rich foods. I am thriving. I feel so much better. I'm performing so much better. I've never had more veggies in my life as I'm doing right now. And I am absolutely loving it. I am providing my body with the fuel it needs to feel my best. But then as what happens with a lot of diets, you might go off plan one day. All of a sudden you have something that has sugar in it. You just can't control. You just stop picking out like crazy. Uh, or you have a carb and you just can't stop yourself from eating that carb. You tell yourself, you see, I knew it. Sugar is the devil. Carbs are evil. No, it's really got very little to do with those foods. It's got to do with you depriving yourself of those foods during that time. And finally, you're allowed to have it. And you're thinking to yourself, all right, tomorrow I'm back on this sugar detox or tomorrow I'm back on low carb. But right now, I'm just going to freaking pig out like crazy. So again, it's not so much about the foods. It's about your thought process. It's how you are justifying the excess. You really got to become aware of those thoughts that are going on in your mind during that time and make sure that you have counter arguments in their place to overcome that challenge. That is the key to your long-term success because foods are highly palatable and they're only going to become more and more palatable. So over time, are you just going to continue to eliminate more and more foods from your diet and try to follow a more bland and boring diet so you don't overeat those foods? Or are you better served over the long term to learn how to eat these foods in moderation? It's not just um, processed foods. For myself personally, my most palatable foods, the foods that I have the toughest time controlling myself with, pistachios and cashews. I just can't, once I start having one, I, I want to eat the entire bag. So just bought some the other day from the bulk food store where my, my daughter works at there. I was going to include them in my high protein ice creams that I'm making with the Ninja Blender. I just shared a recipe just recently there. So um, I made sure that I only purchased a small amount of each because I know I can't control myself. But in this situation last night, uh, so I bought these bags yesterday. Last night, when I'm going to have a handful of pistachios, made the mistake of keeping the bag out on the counter. So I'm eating that handful of pistachios, about 170 calories. And as I'm getting near the end, I'm looking at that bag. I'm like, you know what? Just a few more. That won't hurt me all that much. Have a few more. I'm like, right, okay, just a few more. All right, just a few more. And then I became aware of what was going on in my mind, how I was justifying having just a few more and how is adding up. It made, and one handful ended up becoming two handfuls. Uh, so instead of 170 calories, I'm looking at what's it, 340 calories. Um, so actually, again, not that bad. And a victory for me because in the past, that whole bag would have been gone. So I had learned to become aware of the conversations in my mind. At least I stopped myself. I became aware of how I was justifying that excess when I didn't need it. I was just fine with that one handful. I would have been fine. The key learning experience, so no guilt, not beating myself up, 
it happened much better than the past. Yay me, celebrate. Lesson I learned this time, yay me, is like as soon as I grab that handful, I've gotta put that bag into the cupboard. I've gotta get it out of sight, out of mind there. But again, a learning lesson from the past, don't have big bags in the house. Um, so this really helped me in this situation. So even if I did go crazy overboard, it wouldn't have been as overboard in the past. Still, if I ate that entire bag of pistachios, we're probably looking at 2000 calories worth of pistachios there. And I really wouldn't have felt full, like satiated. I would have felt uncomfortable having all those nuts in my stomach. Not the best thing for me when I have that kind of portion size. So lesson learned, becoming aware of how those foods impact me, make me feel when I have a certain portion size and, and, and I exceed that portion size, that makes me feel uncomfortable. That's a reason to stop, to avoid that pain, that discomfort that's going to happen afterwards, but also recognizing that, holy smokes, for this many calories to not really satiate me, it's just not uh, worth it there. But again, a big lesson, again, out of sight, out of mind is a huge thing for me. Like I typically don't have those nuts in my house because I know I have a tough time controlling myself. And when I do have them in the house, um, I have them in small portion sizes. Again, nuts, great for you. All natural, loaded with nutrients, but very easy to consume in excess for me. Maybe not for you. So it's got nothing to do with it being sugary or carbs. It's like a fat food. Some would say, oh, just eat more fats, go on keto. Well, this would be like keto approved, but I would easily eat my whole, if you allowed me to eat as many freaking pistachios and cashews as I wanted, holy smokes, <laughs> I would be in big, big trouble. So it's, we all got different foods that are highly palatable to ourselves. So it's becoming aware of those foods, keeping them out of sight, out of mind, which is difficult when you have a family of kids who want to have treats in the house, but you can really limit those treats are in the house. And no, I always think to myself, right, that's for my kids, that's for me. I like kind of robbing them of their treats if I dip into the, the highly processed foods that I bought from them. If I'm gonna have a treat, I'm gonna leave the house and, and get a treat instead. So that's what works best for me in those situations. And again, this is really what coaching comes down to for me. It's not telling people to eliminate certain foods. It's not setting them on a specific meal plan. Eat these foods, you're gonna be golden. Because it's the, the old analogy, you give someone a fish, they eat for the day, you teach them how to fish, they're going to eat for a lifetime. So if I give them a meal plan, I get what happens when they fall off that meal plan, or they veer from that meal plan. They're not armed with the skills to eat to the point of satisfaction, to um, learn how to eat responsibly. They're gonna, all right, I'm off plan, I might as well go crazy there. No, you don't have to. All foods are on plan. You can eat your favorite foods anytime you desire, anytime you want. So um, that's been the big eye-opening experience for me rather than having like a cheat day, a cheat meal or anything like that. I'm allowed to have foods, uh, my favorite foods anytime. And again, if you're someone who really struggles to eat to the point of satisfaction, to eat responsibly, I think one of the worst things you can do is include a cheat day in your diet because that just promotes that kind of binge eating experience. You deprive yourself all week long and then you pig out this time. It's not, again, you're, there's no moderation. There's no control in that experience. I've been there. I've done that. Uh, so I think for most of us who struggle with moderation, trying to keep your intake consistent day in and day out will serve you best. And again, with clients, it's really, these are the conversations I'm having with them all the time. This past weekend, one of my clients uh, went out for Mexican food and ice cream felt like crap afterwards. So we had the conversation. Is it, do you avoid Mexican food and ice cream from here on out? Or was it the portion size? Did you just eat more than you needed? And if that was the case, what can you learn from this experience? So the next time you go out for Mexican and ice cream, you just have smaller portion sizes. And when you're tempted to go beyond that portion size, you remind yourself of kind of discomfort, the pain that you felt afterwards and realize it's not worth it to exceed that. So you got, you really got to take deep breaths. You got to calm down. Maybe you can drink some water. Uh, but again, it really does come down to like savoring every bite, savoring the company that with like really enjoying every bite that you're having can have a positive impact, but also kind of weighing the pros and the cons of eating in excess. You really, no benefit typically comes from eating in excess. So it was a learning experience with them. Another client having conversations with him about weekends was the biggest issue. And for him, it came down to drinking, uh, basically recognizing that he still drinks like a teenager and there's just really no reason for it. But it's been kind of a part of his identity. It's been a part of his habit, part of his lifestyle that we tried to break free from it and really becoming aware of the conversations that are going on in his mind when he starts drinking more than he really should be at that point and becoming aware of how that excess drinking impacts him. He recognizes that when he drinks more than two, three beers, how it affects his sleep that evening, sleeps like crap. So that's gonna affect his energy the next day. 
the alcohol affects his energy the next day, the, the performance in the gym suffers from that, and really has brain fog for a few days afterwards. So really not functioning at his best for a few days. So he only has a few days where he's feeling good uh, and then repeats that cycle again. So again, paying attention to that pain from having uh, drinking in excess there and then recognizing how much better you're feeling from cutting it back and recognizing that I don't need to have four beers. That's for myself personally, two is my limit. I used to drink to dr get drunk basically. So six, seven years ago, on the weekends, definitely hammering a bat, pounding it back. It's all about getting drunk at that point. I'm realizing that doesn't serve me well. I feel like shit afterwards. I'm paying the price big time. So there is a price to be paid when you're eating in excess and drinking in excess and recognizing that and recognizing how it's not worth it. And slowly over time, I've gotten to this point where I mean, like, two is basically my limits. On occasion, I will have four. I had four this past weekend out at a golf tournament. It's always, I don't beat myself up. I don't feel guilty. I enjoyed the overall experience. I did sleep like crap that evening. I did feel sluggish the next day. My performance in the gym the next day did suffer. So I recognize that. All right, um, lesson learned. I got to try to avoid that, but recognizing, you know what, celebrating how I have improved over the years. I would have gone way overboard in the past. And this time I kept it to four beers instead of my typical two that I plan. So it doesn't happen too often and paying attention. Like this is why I don't drink four beers all the time because I feel like crap afterwards. So keeping it within two. Uh, and again, for some people, it may be eliminating alcohol altogether. Alcohol isn't good for us. But again, I enjoy my craft beers from time to time. I am so much better now at moderating my alcohol intake. Um, so yeah, what from time to time, I'm cool with it. But I'm if you can eliminate it you have and you feel great from that, Freaking kudos to you because that's fantastic. Alcohol is not good for our brains, not good for our memory, uh, not good for our performance. There's so many negatives that come with it. But if you enjoy it, you want to keep it in your lifestyle, you can learn to drink in moderation. You don't need to drink in excess. You can savor every sip, take your time with that, really enjoy it, and no, stop, have a set stop off point where you know you remind yourself of how crap you're gonna feel if you keep drinking afterwards. So really gotta have those positive conversations going on in your mind. With alcohol, of course, it's much tougher because your senses are numb. They're dull because of that alcohol there, which usually leads to extra food intake. Again, I ended up having chips that I really wasn't planning on having because I had that four beers instead of the two. So again, paying attention to all those factors into play. Recognizing this is a lifelong journey. It's something that we're going to continue to have to work on for life, but we keep getting better and better and better. It's not about perfection in these instances. It's just about having a heightened sense of awareness of how these foods are making us feel, how we feel when we do consume it in excess, how can we improve upon this situation the next time we face this experience. So that's really what it comes down to. You don't have to eliminate all these foods. It is a process of learning to eat in moderation, eating responsibly, eating to the point of satisfaction. Again, my kids, my ex-wife, they all naturally eat to the point of satisfaction. It's been a learning experience for me that has taken time, but it's been the most rewarding experience I've had through this journey because I now have control. I have nutritional freedom. I can be flexible with my diet. I can enjoy all my favorite foods and it feels victorious when I do just have this small little portion size and can push away up. That's what I needed. I really enjoyed that food, that meal um, and move on. Again, a huge sense of victory there, but again, times where I will fall off a little bit and I learn from those experiences. I try to improve upon it the next time. Never guilt, never beating myself up. So. Really, that is where the magic happens, not from trying to find some fad diet, magic meal plan or anything. It's paying attention to the thoughts that are going on in your mind. How can you improve upon the situation yourself and gain control over those foods rather than allowing those foods to have control over you? That's really what's gonna set you up for long-term success. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do me a favor and share it with them. But more than anything, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insight, share your feedback and your own personal experiences. What are the foods that you really have a tough time moderating, eating responsibly to the point of satisfaction? And what have you been doing to try to improve upon those situations? Do me a favor and share them down in the comment section below so we can all learn from each other's experiences. And before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Lose Fat, Get Jacked. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.